Greetings everyone, this is Ramblin' Collector, back here with another book review for all of you today. And I am happy to say we will be diving back into the Dead Souls universe, featuring the novella Blood and Brains by R. Polsgrove, the latest released book. And I cannot tell you guys how excited I've been for this one since the release of A New Night. R. R. Polsgrove has been an author that I've been following for a while now, and someone who has become a very good friend of mine. So I'm happy to finally review the latest edition to their series. With that being said, let's get started. So, to give a bit of context about this novella, this was originally going to be part of R. R. Polsgrove's book 2, A New Night. However, they decided to create this as a supplementary work to allow both the spotlight on Lucas and Natalie, as well as to prevent A New Night from becoming a sort of bloated mess, which I can honestly respect them for that. Because considering if you add the 139 pages of Blood and Brains to the 200 pages that are already in A New Night, you're looking at a slightly bloated second novel, which can make or break a series just from the second book. If the first book is already good, and if the second book flops, you're in trouble. But I will say this one works as a good supplementary work by itself, not only for allowing us more of a spotlight on Lucas and Natalie, and their relationship, but also allowing us to see more of the secondary characters, such as Natalie's brother Kevin and his husband Travis, as well as also showing us two previous characters, Archie and Connor, who were shown in the previous short story of Archie. I will leave a link to that video here in the description down below. And it was really good to see some returning characters at long last, as well as shows us more of zombie society in a way such as how they are very advanced in the medical field due to the fact that they have to keep their bodies constantly on different medical procedures of surgeries or embalming fluid, things of that nature, to prevent their bodies from completely rotting away and giving them a semblance of humanity to hide them from the crowds. But, once again, this also serves as a good supplementary work, which is why I'm going to say you'll want to buy a new knight and blood blood and brains together because otherwise there are some plot points that you will see in blood and brains that will not make sense until you have read a new night so that can either be a hindrance or a help to you guys either way you just get more of exposure to the dead soul series in my opinion which i would say is not a bad deal but more than that i feel like this novella really also highlights on the dangers of neglect of a family member because to give a bit of context here, not only do we see Lucas and Natalie's relationship, but once again, we see Kevin's. And Kevin and Natalie's relationship is very, very strained, as you can see, because he, whether knowingly or unknowingly, has done a lot of neglectful behavior because he was too focused on his relationship with Travis, his husband, which makes sense, but at the same time is still not okay. Especially when you start to realize that your sister is essentially decomposing r rapidly and is very much approaching the second death. And it really comes down to a head when Natalie has to confront Kevin about these multiple facts of how she was close to starving to death. And in case y'all are wondering what the heck do zombies eat, it's kind of obvious. Brains. <laughs> Anyways, but regardless, the fact that Natalie has to break the news to Kevin that Essentially, the only reason that she is still alive is because of Connor and Archie constantly sending her care packages of various brains. That really hits him hard and really shows the fact that he has been, whether knowingly or unknowingly, neglecting her. And this is something that really gives him a nice dose of reality check, especially because he does not approve of Natalie's relationship with Lucas. All in all, I'd say this one definitely does well at highlighting a lot of other like secondary plot points that are occurring whilst New Night is still going on. Anyways, I think I've talked enough. Let's move on to random thoughts here. So, random thoughts. I gotta say, it's actually kind of cool to see how zombies are so proficient in medical knowledge, such as various surgeries of attaching multiple limbs. And I gotta say, Lucas is still a gremlin, but he's a gremlin who cares. Like, if you listen to my review of A New Night, you'll see me calling Lucas a chaotic gremlin. 
And that is very, very true. Whether he's in his own book, or whether he's just a supporting character for Quinn and Rianne's relationship, Lucas still manages to have that sort of gremlin energy about him, and I love him for it. But more than that, I want to give some kudos to R.I. Polesgrove here, because first of all, I love how they are able to create this whole connected universe with multiple works of short stories, as well as full-fledged novels. Like, as of right now, R.I. Polesgrove currently has three full-fledged novels, three short stories, and one novella, all rolled into the Dead Souls universe. And yet, somehow, through this convoluted web, they are managing to construct multiple other short stories that are coming in the future, as well as other full-fledged novels, which all connects in this huge interwoven web. And I'm very excited to see how they plan this all out. More importantly, I'm excited to see how all the details will add up together into a single cohesive storyline. So I gotta give kudos where kudos is due. R.I. Poles Grove does a fantastic job of making sure that this is all connected in some way, shape, or form, and that none of it feels disjointed or separate from the main series. It all connects back to the main storyline, and I love that about their works. And I will say, despite being short, like only 139 pages, Blood and Brains does work well as a world-building piece more often than not. Now, with all that being said, let's go on to the final score, shall we? So, all in all, I would say I would give Blood and Brains a very nice 8 out of 10. It is well-written, has great character development going on, good world-building for the world of Dead Souls itself. Despite the fact that it's only 139 pages, you still manage to be gripped in with just the funny little romance between Natalie and Lucas, as well as the struggles of family relationships between Natalie and Kevin. And honestly, I recommend it especially if you're curious for more from the Dead Souls universe, or if you want something to go along with A New Night. Once again, it is highly recommended that you purchase A New Night and Blood and Brains together. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for listening to this crazy man's ramblings. I really do appreciate it. And if you like what I do, feel free to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the video down below, or subscribe if you love listening to this guy ramble. More than that, I would say if you want to check out more of R.I. Polesgrove's work, feel free to click the playlist link here that you'll see in the end screen. As well as if you just want to see more of the book rambles that I do, feel free to click the link to that playlist as well. And if you guys have any suggestions for me for any future reviews, I am more than willing to take up the challenge. Once again, thank you all for listening. This is Bambling Collector signing off. Have a great day, my fellow readers.